In 2023, Google Chrome is going to remove third-party cookies, effectively causing the biggest change in digital advertising ever. Not only is this going to change the way we advertise online forever, it's also causing a huge battle for a viable alternative. With browsers, ad agencies, regulators, ad tech firms, publishers and brands all fighting it out to try and come up with an alternative way to track people online and sell adverts. But what does any of this mean? What even is a third party cookie and why are we replacing it? How can brands, publishers and advertisers prepare themselves? The first thing to understand is what is a third party cookie. And to understand this, we need to understand what is a first party cookie. In 1994, Lou Montelli, the founding engineer of Netscape, invented the cookie as a way for websites to conveniently remember your information. Kind of like a report card that gets stored on your browser. For example, let's say you visit amazon.com. Amazon gives you their cookie, the Amazon cookie. It's stored on your browser and remembers some information about you. Things like what's in your shopping cart, what is your username, what are your language preferences, things to improve your general website experience. So what is a third party cookie? A third party cookie is given to you from a different website than the one you are on. For example, let's say you visit Amazon.com. Now they'll give you their own Amazon cookie, you know, the first party cookie to remember your shopping cart, etc. But what happens if Google double click also gives you a cookie? That's a third party cookie. It's from a separate website and usually it's from an advertising network. You see, advertisers figured out if I give you a cookie on this website, and then I give you a cookie on this website, I could link you together. I'd know if you're going from that one to that one, right? I'd know if you clicked on an advert here and then you bought a product there, I know it's you. If you visited a television here, maybe I can show you television adverts over here. Take for example, Google DoubleClick. They are partnered with nearly 14 million websites. That is shops, newspapers, marketplaces, blogs, you name it. So let's say you visit Amazon to browse televisions. And because Amazon partnered with Google DoubleClick, you get a Google DoubleClick cookie and it records down this person was looking at televisions. Next, you go to read an article on the New York Times. Now, the New York Times also partners with Google DoubleClick. So, Google DoubleClick knows your history and can tell advertisers like Amazon that somebody who was previously looking at televisions there is now reading an article on the New York Times. Would you like to advertise? You can see how powerful this is. And just how prevalent are third party cookies? Incredibly prevalent. In fact, cookies have been responsible for the massive growth of the online advertising industry. Before cookies, the only way you could really remember users on a website was if they logged in. By giving somebody a cookie, you can track if they've seen an advert on one website, like maybe a blog, if they've clicked it, right? And then when they visit another website, if they bought the product. It essentially made online advertising measurable. And it's the reason why advertising blew up and was seen as a better alternative than compared to like traditional advertising. So unlike TV and newspapers, with online ads using cookies, you can measure clicks, you can measure sales, you can measure advert performance. And with better advertising, this made a lot of online publishing possible and quote unquote free content. Google actually talks about this all the time, keeping the internet quote unquote free and open rather than behind a paywall. And you can see that with measurable online adverts, which can be personalized using cookie-based technology and things like this, publishers 
have valuable real estate that they can sell to brands. Much more valuable real estate than if you know they're just selling generic ad space to anonymous people. According to McKinsey, for some publishers, up to 80% of ad revenues come from third-party cookie-targeted ads. Other studies have shown mixed results. So one study found that turning off third-party ads would decrease ad revenue by 50 to 60%. And that is a scary amount of money to lose for any publisher. But of course, all of this presents a massive privacy problem. And ever since the 2018 Cambridge Analytica scandal, online privacy has become a huge issue. The real issue with third-party cookies is that most users don't know that they're giving their information up to third-party companies. If I visit Amazon, I can understand that I'll get an Amazon cookie, right? You know, it's useful that they remember my shopping cart. But if I visit Amazon and I get a cookie from Google DoubleClick or Outbrain or some website I've never visited before, like evil ad tracking network, I've never even visited them. I never gave them my permission to, you know, to collect my information. And most people don't know they're sharing this information or even what a cookie is. And to be honest, the name cookie shows you just how innocent the whole thing started out as. You know, just leaving a small set of breadcrumbs behind to remind a website, oh, hey, you know, this guy's back and here's your username again. That's before the innocent cookie turned into this kind of weaponized tracking device. According to Quartz, Google's decision to remove third-party cookies from Chrome was really a recognition of the reality that cookie-based tracking had suffered a swift and irreversible fall from grace. You see, everything came to a head in 2018 after the Cambridge Analytica scandal, when a third-party analytics company harvested people's data on Facebook and used that data to then target adverts and sway the American election. Funnily enough, that had nothing to do with cookies, but it kind of worked in the same way. So it's the same kind of thing, right? You're going on one website, Facebook, but actually Cambridge Analytica is coming in and taking your information without you really knowing it and using it to then personalize adverts and stuff like this. Same thing, different mechanics. Having companies know so much about you, companies that you've never interacted with, is kind of creepy. According to the Pew Research Center, 72% of Americans worry that everything they do online is being tracked by advertisers, tech firms, and other companies. 81% believe the risks they face from having their data collected outweighs the benefits. So you can see why browsers like Firefox in 2019 and Safari in 2020 have already blocked third-party cookies. And why now, in 2023, Google Chrome is gonna do the same. Third-party cookies are going extinct. Right now, there is a huge competition going on to find an alternative to third-party cookies that brands, advertisers, publishers, and you know the regulators in public are gonna be okay with. In fact, the W3C has a 355 member group, including stakeholders, browsers, ad agencies, ad tech firms, and publishers, all discussing a way to find common ground and a viable alternative. At the moment, we have three options. Let's explore. Option one, Google's browser-based model, Flock. Google has announced that while Chrome will block third-party cookies, it's gonna replace them <laughs> with a new tracking technology called Flock, F-L-O-C. Now, you didn't think that Google was completely gonna hide you, did you? Flock is said to have two privacy-promoting features. First, Google Chrome won't track you on an individual level, but will instead group you with other users with common interests, effectively hiding you in the crowd. Secondly, all tracking data that is, you know, computed and everything to put you in this group is going to be stored locally on your computer, on your browser. So it doesn't get processed by a server or anything like that. The browser, Google Chrome, will do it all. So essentially, advertisers are gonna to have to target groups of users like, you know, the football cohort. And to target this football cohort, they're going to have to work with Google Chrome to do it, since Google Chrome holds all the data on tracking, targeting, and measuring. In those W3C meetings I was telling you about, 
Google has actually been criticized for basically forcing their agenda on everyone and turning the meeting of 355 members into a quote, show and tell. Jochen Schlosser, the CTO of Adform, an ad tech company, said to Quartz about Google, quote, it's not a conversation. It's not about trying to be creative or trying to find a compromise. This is about someone doing a show and then taking feedback and then saying, thank you for listening. It was great having you. Option two, first party data tracking. Now, the big time publishers, you know, like Vox, Insider, the New York Times, they've all seen this whole third party cookie fiasco coming. And, you know, they, they predicted this way back, you know, since uh, the GDPR thing happened in 2016. So they've already started doing first party data tracking. This means that they've started collecting your user data by themselves. So when you visit the New York Times, they ask to capture your email address. They record what categories of articles you're reading. They offer you surveys to find out what demographic or what topics you're interested in. Then after collecting as much information as they can, they create segments of users like football fans, fashionistas, etc., and sell ad space to advertisers. So if you're a football fan, you'll see adverts for football streaming subscriptions, etc. Of course, there is a catch here. And that catch is that this massively favors big publishers, right? With huge amounts of visitors and huge budgets to be able to create these kinds of systems. For smaller publishers, it's much more difficult to collect this much first party data. And that's why we're getting these kind of partnerships going on. So the local media consortium is working on partnering together 5,000 US based local newspapers in a kind of new ad network to share first party data amongst each other. And there might be even privacy concerns on this. At what permission did I give the local news consortium permission to you know, share my information amongst all of these different newspapers, right? In fact, your companies may share your information with others to enrich their own data. For example, Vice, which is partnered with the credit agency Experion. Now, what data does a credit agency have? Incomes, cars, home details, credit history, list goes on. Option three, new forms of identity-based tracking. In this case, an ad tech company or some kind of central authority, right, would assign everybody a unique advertising ID. One big example of this is Unified ID 2.0, which is a new central authority that's coming about. And it's partnered with companies like BuzzFeed, the LA Times, Washington Post, etc. They've all signed up for this. In this case, companies will agree on using the same unique identifier, a person's email address, to then collectively gather data about that person and share it amongst all of them so they can serve that person relevant adverts. So for example, let's say you visit BuzzFeed and you log in with your email address. And after this, you go to the LA Times and log in with your email address. Your unique identifier, your email address, basically gives you away to the advertisers that you've visited both websites. This method is said to improve privacy because the unique user ID, so the email address, would be encrypted, right? And there's also gonna be an option to opt out of these websites individually. Of course, eh, there's a criticism here, right? Because these companies are, again, sharing your information and similar to the whole issue with third-party cookies, I'm not sure at what point did I agree for, you know, Buzzfeed to share my information with the LA Times. So that's really where we are currently in terms of options moving forward. And it seems that there is no perfect solution Either we give Google complete control over everything with their new Google Chrome flock scheme, or we let companies share our data with other companies, but this time with slightly different agreements, slightly different mechanics, but in the end, you know, still sharing our data everywhere. And I think let's be realistic here. Sharing data and selling personalized advertising space, I don't think it's something that's gonna stop. In 2020, online advertising amounted to $378 billion. So whether this is a battle for user privacy or control over the advertising industry, I'll leave that for you to decide. 
for publishers, exploring new ways to sell advertising space is going to be paramount. What percentage of your users are logging in? Are you able to collect more first party data? Are you able maybe to join a group of companies collecting first party data? How much of your ad revenue currently comes from third party cookies? For advertisers, retargeting ads in its traditional form is going to die. Targeting may rely much more on personally identifiable information like email addresses and using these email addresses to you know, build lists to then target. And also knowing all of the touch points of a customer journey like, you know, they visited Google, then they clicked on a Facebook ad, then they went on this website, they clicked this link, then they came back, you know, all, all this stuff like multi-touch attribution. That's going to be a lot more difficult to measure without third-party cookies. And for brands, well, it's important for us to realize that the whole advertising landscape is about to change and nothing is really certain right now. So our advertising revenues are at risk, right? know that your advertising agency or your in-house team is likely going to have to present you with some options rather soon. And also know that you might have to start using cookie-less IDs, so new identity-based tracking methods. So like Unified ID 2.0, perhaps soon if everybody else is also using the same thing. So that's it for this video. Man, it was hard to make. Very complicated issue, third-party cookies and the situation is constantly evolving. Regardless, I hope this was useful to you. I tried to explain it as best as I could. I tried to understand the subject as best as I could. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me in the comments and I'll get back to you with the best of my knowledge. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, cheers everybody. And this is Jonathan Lull. See you later.